Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk on genomic library. Many times it is necessary to generate the genomic information. There are two ways by which genomic information can be generated. Number one is we can create the genomic library which contains the entire genome sequence that can be from any species and the second way is C DNA library that is complementary DNA library which contains only the express genomic information that is it contains only exon. Now suppose this is the cell in which we are interested so the very first step is you isolate the DNA from this cell then carry out the fragmentation of that DNA by using the particular restriction endonuclease so that you will have the different pieces of DNA simultaneously uh, on other side uh, you select any one of this uh, vector you can go for a plasmid or uh, lambda phage or uh, uh, lambda bacteriophage or uh, cosmid, back, pack, yak, etc. So you have a choice like lambda, you can go for uh, lambda bacteriophage or cosmid as a vector, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> back, pack, uh, any, any one of the uh, vector which are mentioned over here. So you treat those vector by using the same restriction endonuclease which you have used to cut this DNA. Now your uh, DNA uh, in which, which is converted into different uh, fragments each fragments will have the cohesive end and your uh, vector will also have the cohesive end. So you mix both vector as well as fragment DNA fragment so that the ligation will take place uh, here you add the any one of the ligase enzyme and then either by transformation or by in vitro packaging method you transfer it into the particular host in which uh, maybe E. coli or yeast whichever is required and uh, this is about this is the way by which uh, you can create the uh, gen genetic uh, information <coughs> another way is cdna that is a complementary dna for this you select the cell in which you are interested and you isolate mrna now here as we begin with the mRNA, it means it is free from intron, means it contains only the sequence which is get expressed, okay. And from this mRNA, by using reverse transcriptase enzyme, you create complementary DNA. Now you are having a double stranded DNA, you are having a complementary double stranded DNA and then you cut this cDNA by using any one of the restriction endonuclease as I mentioned previously use the same restriction endonuclease to cut this cDNA as well as to cut this vector uh, for cDNA we can use either plasmid vector or lambda phage so you cut the vector by using the selected restriction endonuclease next step would be same as we have seen previously like you add your fragments of DNA with the vector ligation will take place followed by transformation or in vitro packaging etc. Okay then next either the amplification will take place or you can go for screening of the particular clone in which we are interested. Now this diagram is a simplified way to understand like how to construct the genomic library. See suppose these are cell in which we are interested right. 
now uh, this is the eukaryotic uh, cell and it shows the presence of nucleus and the dna is present over here so the very first step is uh, isolation of dna extraction of dna okay so that it is written like dna is extracted from the cell then this extracted dna is digested with the help of a particular restriction endonuclease enzyme so that you will have the different fragments of this uh, dna and next is uh, you select you select these uh, you select any one oh let's go back you select any vector any suitable vector for insertion of these uh, fragments okay so these are nothing but the uh, vectors in which these fragments are inserted by using the ligase enzyme now these are nothing but the recombinant dna uh, where the uh, this 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 is the fragment one fragment this is the second fragment third fragment like this way now and these recombinant dna are uh, transform into the particular host cell okay now this is the one organism carrying this particular fragment of dna this is the second having second fragment of dna third having third fragment of dna so this is the way by which we can construct the genomic library now this the diagram will help us to understand the construction of genomic library in detail suppose this is the human dna okay and next isolation of this uh, dna next cut that dna by using the particular uh, restriction endonuclease it is mentioned here sau3a so that this this dna will get cut into different fragments uh, let's see the uh, suppose uh, 20 k kilobase pair fragments are produced by using this restriction endonuclease and uh, each fragment will have the cohesive end okay now your uh, dna fragment is ready to get inserted into particular vector now this is the bacteriophage lambda uh, dna total uh, length of this bacteriophage lambda dna is 49 kilo base pair from which this much portion can be replaced okay so cut it by using the bam h1 restriction endonuclease so that this space this much space is now available for this fragment to get inserted now mix this or add this dna fragment to a uh, lambda vector arms both will have uh, as both are carrying the cohesive ends so that it will get inserted into lambda vector and then ligation will takes place and this recombinant dna that is lambda bacteriophage lambda dna carrying the fragment of human a fragment of dna which is uh, obtained from the uh, this uh, human dna now it is packed in into the head of lambda bacteriophage okay and now this is ready to infect any host cell so this is the way by which you can insert every fragment of human dna into the lambda bacteriophage
now from this what we can we can define the genomic library as it is nothing but the collection of recombinant clone each of which carries the different piece of dna from the organism of interest so that all of them they represent the complete genome of that organism now next question is how to screen the particular clone suppose we want to select the one particular clone carrying the particular fragments of dna how to go for that so the method which we are going to see over here is the colony blot hybridization see the, this is the petri dish containing the different colonies and each colony carries one particular each colony is nothing but the one particular clone having the uh, one fragment of dna this will have another fragment this will have the third fragment fourth fragment fifth fragment like like that way each colony represent the particular clone now from this population from this population of clone if we want to isolate if we want to detect the particular clone in which we are interested then next step is blotting of this cell to membrane means transfer these colonies on membrane and then the lysis of this cell will carry out dna will come out denaturation of this dna will carry out and this dna will be fixed on the particular on this membrane okay now you just see that i'll i'll repeat it again these colonies are transferred on the membrane then the lysis of cell will carry out from that the dna will come out the denaturation of as this dna are double stranded the hydrogen bonds are broken so that we call it as a denaturation of dna then this single stranded dna will get fixed on the membrane okay now the probes are prepared now what is mean by probes this these are nothing but the particular sequence of nucleotides we can call it as a ribonucleotide uh, which are radioactively labeled okay so you use these probes you add those probes on this now membrane so that if these probes are complementary to this dna single stranded dna then they, there will be formation of hydrogen bond between this single stranded probe which are radioactively labeled with single stranded dna okay and those probes free pro probes can be removed by washing and then you next step is you go for the visualization that is being radioactively labeled you can very easily Uh, identify the clones which contains the complementary uh, dna to this probe so this is the way by which you can isolate you can identify the particular clone with the help of radioactively label probe now what are the uses of this uh, genomic uh, library there are many situation where it is necessary to study the entire sequence of that particular genome for example like a uh, human genome project where the each and every uh fragments from the human genome is 
known in lambda bacteriophage and these bacteriophage are allowed to adsorb on the particular host cell and then they will create the there will be a plaque formation so you can have this entire human genome sequence maybe in two or three plants okay so basically this genomic library is used for sequencing application thank you